What is going on everybody? It is Friday, October the 8th, and that means it's time for my News Radar. Let's start off this episode talking about probably the biggest new device that we still haven't had fully unveiled to us, and that is the Google Pixel 6. We finally have a time and a date where we're going to finally learn everything there is to learn, hopefully, about the Pixel 6, and that has been announced as October the 19th, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is just a couple of short weeks away. I will be doing a live stream for this event, just like I did for the uh, recent Microsoft Surface event where we got Surface Duo 2 unveiled and fully announced. I'll be doing the same kind of thing here for this Pixel launch as well, because I'm quite excited about this Pixel launch. We've actually got more information here to share as well, because there's been some leaks happening here about Pixel 6. This has been kind of compiled here by Tom's guide, and there's a lot of good stuff here. So with Pixel 6 Pro, apparently we're going to be looking at a pretty damn stellar set of cameras here. We have a 50 megapixel wide angle lens, which we know isn't the newest sensor of its kind, but it is quite good and it is physically quite large, quite large pixels as well. So 50 megapixels up from 12 on the Pixel 5, which already took best in class kinds of photos. That's going to allow them a lot more wiggle room to do a lot more work with these photos looking very, very good. We have a 12 megapixel ultra wide. So that's pretty standard. Nothing too crazy there. And then, you know, when we say ultra wide, we're talking about those super wide angle shots that people do love to have. But the one that's really blowing my mind the most here is a 48 megapixel telephoto lens. And it's important to point out that this lens here is actually a rectangle. It's squared off. And the reason for that is because this is a periscope uh, type telephoto camera, which means the light goes into the lens, hits a mirror, which reflects it down uh, into the body through probably several more lenses to magnify this image even further. And it's rumored to be capable of 4X optical zoom, which is pretty good. Keep in mind that devices like the Galaxy Z Fold are a 3X, Surface Duo 2 is a 2X. Well, let's do 4X here. And even more than that, let's make it 48 megapixels, which means that it's a very high resolution image, which means that when we digitally zoom in further from there, we're going to have an even clearer image than we did before. So yes, 4X optical is rumored and prior rumors have had an even at 5X optical. But when we digitally punch in, it's potentially going to be even better than that, way better than that. And when we compare this to what Samsung has done, you're going to kind of see where Google's taking a different approach, but who knows, their results may be just as good here because on the S21 Ultra, we had a periscope telephoto lens, which is capable of 10X optical zoom. So let's explain this really quickly. So the difference between digital and optical. So with optical, you're actually using lenses to zoom in. It's like if I use my camera here, I'm not going to to zoom in on my face because it'd be horrible. This is optical zoom, right? You can get right up in there. You're not going to lose any quality doing optical zoom. Digital zoom is literally taking a picture and then just zooming in on the picture that's essentially already been taken in a, in a, in a kind of way. That's what that's the difference there. Optical zoom is going to be way better. So the S21 Ultra, so the S21 Ultra had 10x optical zoom, which is really impressive. With the Pixel 6 Ultra, we're looking at probably 4X optical. However, this is a 10 megapixel camera on the S21. This is a 48 megapixel. So we're talking about something that's nearly five times higher resolution. So that's what, what is that going to allow you to do? Or a higher resolution image, think of it like this. Think of the image being, this is a low resolution image, it's little, and a higher resolution image is physically larger, which does what? It allows you to zoom in further without losing detail. So there's a trade-off here between what Pixel 6 Pro is doing and what the S21 Ultra is doing. However, I think the end result is going to be comparable. We have also finally gotten a leak of something that was rumored as well, and this is the brand new Pixel Stand. So obviously this is something you're going to set your Pixel up against, and it's going to wirelessly charge it like that. And there have been rumors that potentially as fast as 23 watts, which is pretty decent actually. To me, you know, look, we have some fast chargers now that are insanely fast and some wire chargers that are way up over 100 watts of charging, which just seems 
preposterous to me. It's a lot of heat to be generating. You got you're literally having to split your battery into two batteries and split that charge in between the two of them so that the thing doesn't explode. I'm not really sure if the benefit there is outweighing the the uh, the cost, the concern, and the durability issues which may come along with that kind of charging. To me, anything over 18 watts is totally fine by me. So 23 watt wireless hopefully doesn't generate a ton of heat. We also see in this late shot here that face and fingerprint unlock are both offered. We have not had face unlock on a Pixel device since the Pixel 4. It's not really something that I use and obviously it's not going to be something on the level of an iPhone that has the 3D dot projector or on the level of the Pixel 4 which also aped these features as well for a really secure face unlock. Personally, I don't care. I won't use the fingerprint scanner anyways because it's quicker and it's more convenient. I don't understand why face unlock even exists. It seems totally superfluous to me. But whatever, it's there if you do want it. And there actually are several more things on this article which you can find in the description if you want to read the entire article yourself. Pixel 6 Pro coming October 19th. Be here for that live stream because there are also rumors mounting that the Pixel Fold will in fact launch alongside the Pixel 6 and we may get our first look at it there at that October 19th launch event. This is going to be Google's attempt to do what Samsung has already done with the Z Fold devices. I am extremely excited about this. There's been almost no real substantial leaks about this thing over the last few weeks. We just know that it's coming. We don't really know what it looks like. Is this thing going to have the Pixel 6 aesthetic, the bar across the back? I think that's possible. We have had word about this for a little bit that it has been coming by the end of the year. We are running out of time very, very quickly on that. So again, you're going to want to be here for that live stream. I also want to end things today by bringing some attention to something involving Windows 11. So a lot of people in particular, a lot of you guys and guys in my comments have said, hey, I'd like to try Windows 11, but my computer doesn't actually support it. Well, Windows has actually released a few quick steps you can take to go ahead and install Windows 11 anyway. So if you jump to the link in the description, which is on a support.microsoft link, there are some things you can do here. To talk about just installing Windows 11 in general, and they say you can do this just by going to your update settings and checking and, you know, if you're supported, if you're good to go, you're going to see it there. However, there are other ways to install Windows 11, not recommended, but there are, there are ways to do this. So there's a link here to a download of something called the Windows 11 Assistant, and what that's going to do is it's going to just go ahead and pull that download for you. So, so let's say your computer does support Windows 11, or your computer is supported by Windows 11, maybe it's more accurate, but the update just hasn't rolled out to you yet so it just hasn't gotten to you yet that's going to go ahead and download and install it however let's say your computer does not have tpm 2.0 so maybe you've run the update checker or the health checker and it says hey you don't have tpm 2.0 you can't do this well there is a thing you can do here you can actually go to your registry and you can actually edit that key which is not difficult at all really to do and then you can go ahead and run that assistant again and it will download. It's going to give you a message saying, we don't recommend you do this, but we're going to let you go ahead and do this. And like I said, it's really not even that hard. I'm, I'm already on Windows 11, but I can kind of try and show you here. So if you hit your start button and then type in run and select that, you're going to get this little menu here. If you type in R-E-G-E-D-I-T reg edit, you're going to get this thing pop up and that is just your registry editor. And then at that point, that link that we saw here, this address you're just going to follow that address on the side of the screen here you're going to find that first one h key local machine open up system open up setup go into mo setup and then that's your value there if it's not there you're just going to right click and hit new and create a new d word 32 bit value paste in that name which i've already got mine already there so i'm not actually going to do that i'm just going to delete that at that point you can double click on it and set the value to one you should be able to then use that thing like i said check for that update and it should in theory download it's actually a really simple thing to do but like I said, this does require that your device does have TPM of some kind, but that's going to cover a much larger amount of devices. Now, keep in mind, Windows Update may or may not work. Microsoft may withhold updates from you from then on, which you may have to then go manually update again from there. I'm sure there will be tons of tutorials 
about exactly how to do that. Maybe I'll do one myself as time goes on because Jesse's computer is a Gen 1 Ryzen and is not supported. So maybe we'll go down this road. Maybe I'll do a step-by-step -step later if that's something that you think will be helpful. So guys, that's all the news I have for you today. Be sure to check back every Monday and Friday for the next news radar. If you like this video, please do consider hitting that join button down below as that is the best way to directly support the channel. Stay tuned for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.